let's talk about Cat Williams. You, you've worked with him before? Work with Cat plenty of time. That's my homie. Okay. I fucks with Cat. You know, um, he did, we did a movie repost together. Right. You know, we have res high respect for each other. He respects me, my grind, and he, know, and he knows Mike is out there doing his thing. And I know, of course, he's on a whole different, you know, that level with him. And, you know, it's like comedy is like this level and this level and it's that level. Okay, so, so who's at the top levels right now? Well, I mean, making real money, I mean, Kev, you know, Kev, I think, is probably one, and then Kat is probably right there. You know, and um, Kevin here, I was talking about he's, he's done with stand-up. Oh, really? I mean, that's what I'm hearing. But, you know, how many times Michael Jordan retired? He's probably going to focus on some other stuff now. I mean, he's about to have the biggest stand-up movie ever about to hit theaters this summer. Oh, so he has a stand-up movie coming. Yes. And after that, he's done. Yes. It was shot at the at Veteran Stadium, at the, at, not Veteran Stadium, at the Lincoln Financial Field. Okay. At the football field in Philadelphia. I was there, I witnessed it. Okay. I mean, and I, was, I, went, I was in the theater watching Meet the Blacks, and then I saw a preview of it. She looks incredible. You know, and I mean, what can you do after that? Hmm. After performing in, at, at football stadium. Okay. You know, but I mean, and the thing about it, he shouldn't. I mean, he's young, and comedy is something that we do until we're 80, 90 years old. Right. But he's probably just going to probably just take a break and do some other things, you know, probably do more movies or maybe television or maybe... I know he has a, um, a big online company that he just opened up. Oh, right. It's like, it's like a streaming comedy yeah. thing. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work. I'll be honest. He has a huge following, so, you know, if you got 30 million people following you, all you need is... 10% of them to watch it and you'd be good. Yeah, but, but, but that's not really how the numbers work. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, cause it, just because you have 30, you know, if you have 3 million followers, it doesn't mean that 10% is actually going to reach in their pocket and, and pay for it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe 1%, maybe 0.5%. Like, you can't, it's not a 10% or right. a 50% It type is about of a 1%. Number. Yeah, because it, it doesn't cost a lot of money to follow somebody. No, no. <laughs> it's pretty cheap. That's what I'm saying. So, what are we, so he's going to be charging for the streaming? Well, yeah, I heard it's going to be like a Spotify, but for comedy, which is a little weird because, you know, you have comedy incorporated into, into the streaming stuff anyways. So you can get comedy and whatever else. Kevin, if you want to retire, retire, motherfucker, <laughs> so I can take over <laughs> shit. So, so the top co comedians right now are Kevin Hart and Cat Williams? Yeah. That's it? I'm saying as far as doing something now. I mean, we know when Chris Rock is ready, yeah. Chris Rock will jump take over. Chris Rock is my man. He's my favorite comedian. Yeah. Yes. I think Dave Chappelle is my favorite comedian. For real. I go, I mean, I'm saying, I'm not, if you go all the time, I go Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. But I'm saying right now, right now, comedians, Chris Rock is my guy. Chris Rock is more like, I guess, you know, I guess, I'm not going to say the grown ups. You know, it's just when Chris Rock put a special out, you know, he does it every five years or so, and when he does, it's always a special. It's crazy. Yeah, people still say toss my salad and like, I'll, I'll, you know, quotes from, from his particular. You know, stand-ups. No, I, I feel you. I, I feel you. Uh, why, why do you think that Cat Williams has this crazy shit that's been happening? I don't, I don't know details of that. I don't even know much details of the punching the kid in the face. I don't, but look, his tour is called the Conspiracy Tour, okay? He's just creating conspiracy. Just, and the thing about it, America like crazy things. The more crazier you are, the more people are curious about you. They want to come out and see you. You know, tell you guys... Say, you know what, Cat, you're crazy, we're not fucking with you, and nobody go buy a ticket, that's probably when he'll stop acting crazy. Okay. All right? But as far as that, hey, Cat, just do, hey, do whatever it takes. Do, do you. Okay. Uh, speaking of crazy, what happened between you and uh, Delicious and her? Oh, my God. Her husband, ex-husband? Ex. -husband? ex uh, you know what? Well, I mean, he's in, is, uh, they were divorced? I'm not, I'm not sure. But me and Del Delicious, what happened? We shot a movie. My, my first movie that I produced, you know, starred in it, co-directed it, it's called Coney Montana. It's a spoof of Scarface. It's straight to DVD movie that I, I actually sell this movie on the road. Like, you, it's hard to get it. I think I got it on Vimeo.com, and then if you come to my show, you can buy a copy. Okay. I, uh, I made it, it's like another little hood classic movie. So what happened, um, we shot this movie in Delaware, and I know when she came out to do the movie, because the movie was about, um, you know, Scarface was about selling cocaine and stuff like that, you know. With this movie, I wanted to sell something that 
that is relevant right now, which was booty shots. Okay. So it's, you know, so this movie is like I said, instead of cocaine, we're selling booty shots. And you know, Scarface in this in, in this movie, his lady was on the coke, you know, she was using the stuff. So I said I needed a girl with an ass, so it looked like she's using ass shots because that's the product her man is selling. So that's why Delicious became the the girl with the ass. She right. became my co-star in the movie. And when she came to shoot the movie, you know, I show her the hospitality, like Africans, like she could have went to a hotel, but I had I have a really huge house in Delaware, like five bedrooms, five bathrooms, you know, and a lot of like the directors, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the co-stars, they all stayed in my house when we shot the movie. You know, I mean, and I even offered delicious like a room here, you could stay, if you don't want to stay at the hotel, you could stay here. And she felt like I showed her hospitality. So I came to Detroit to do a show. And then also, I pretty much got almost, a, it was probably the second edit of the movie. And I went to show it to her. So when I flew to Detroit, promoters booked me in a hotel, everything. She's like, Mike, no, you don't stay in a hotel. When I came to do movie, you stayed at my, I stayed at your house. You know, come and stay at my house. For some reason, I had the worst gut feeling about this. Okay. Sometimes you gotta always go with your gut. <laughs> gut feelings. She said, come and stay at my house. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> you know, um, because I went to show the movie. I said, okay. I, 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 you know, she said, don't worry. You know, I'm, I'm single. I live here alone. Just me and my kids. And you family. She's like, you're a family to me, you know. Like, I, you know, I, and I think earlier that day I went there, her mom, her pop was there, the kids were there. It was like, we cool. Like, nothing ever happened between us. You know, we were like real cool, just strictly cool. So we hanging out, like, we did, I did the show. We hanging out in the city that whole day after the show, like hanging out. And I think word got around, like, she's hanging out with Mike, like, you know. And uh, one thing that, oh, I know in the middle of the night sometimes, the ex comes to the house and he's pissed off and she runs off, you know. And one thing that, nothing really happened, you know what I mean? Like, he just pissed and he just came in and, and just came and went and just left. He just. You know, it just it was more like a panic type of thing, you know. I mean, that was really it. I think really, you know, everything else was just you know, over-exaggerated. Because it made it sound like he tried to kill you no. or, or <laughs> something. So that he just showed up at the house? He showed up at the house. Well, so did, did she call the police? Well, she, yeah, she eventually called the police, and he was already gone by then. You know, she, he, he came and I like just, you know, like, I, that was like middle of the night. I was asleep when this crap happened. It was just... It was just a nightmare. Did you actually see him? I remember seeing his face. <laughs> so you guys saw each other. But you know, he probably saw me like, man, this comedian ain't doing shit with her. You know, you probably had it for like, he ain't. So you, you were doing nothing, doing nothing with Delicious? Never. Nothing? No. Tried to woman. At the same time, she's, she just, she's the type, I think that, she wouldn't just go through anybody. I think she was like, she, you know, woman reads a certain age, she wants a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, and that's probably she's probably in a, she's probably looking for a relationship at that time, you know, looking for somebody to be to be involved with. She's not looking for no dick, you know, because after a while, I mean, she, she, you know, she'd probably be considered a hoe. She was doing that, you know. So we were just cool, like we never did nothing. I almost died for no pussy. <laughs> right, because the way it was uh, sort of presented, it was like, you know, Michael Blackson is smashing. You know, delicious, and her ex-husband walks in and tries to kill them all and kill himself. <laughs> Helicopters coming yeah, in. I don't know what the media was, man. Hold on, I think we actually reported on it. Hold on. Yeah, delicious husband's husband smacks her up, and Michael Blackson at home. <laughs> this smacks is, me up too. I, I guess so. How, how, how would they know? Yeah, this this is the way, and it was. Well, I know there's a police report. And that's why, I mean, the thing about it, once cops is called, then everything comes out. Once the police report is made, I mean, if cops was never called, none of this would have came out. Okay. None of it would have right. came out. Right. During uh, Blackson and Gordon's altercation, Delicious found refuge in another bedroom where she locked the door. As Gordon was trying to break in, she jumped out of the window and ran to a neighbor's house. After jumping out of the second story window, Delicious suffered a wrist injury. Did any of this stuff happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, that happened. Is that what it says? Yeah. That's what it says. Where'd that come from? Vlad TV. <laughs> but we got it from another source. Yeah. Did any of that stuff happen? Jump out of the second story window or? I was asleep. 
You were asleep. <laughs> I remember seeing a light skinned dude, you know, and I would have felt like I would have felt like I deserved it if I would at least like fucking her, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like that's the word, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time for no reason. For no reason. Since then, I said, man, I don't give a damn if Beyonce invite me to her house. I'm not going. Okay. You know, lemonade. I don't care if she got lemonade to give me. I don't want to drink it. <laughs> so you showed up on Chief Keef's uh, Bang Part 2. Mm -hmm. How'd you end up hooking up with Chief Keef? You know what? It's crazy. We just became friends on social media. And then we exchanged numbers. And he asked me to host this thing. And I hosted it. I just pretty much did it on my iPhone and sent it to him. Mm -hmm. You know, we never even hung out. We just became cool through Twitter. And then we exchanged numbers and we just keep in, we kept in touch and just, you know, talking, you know. Rappers love comedy. Athletes love comedy. I'm friends with a lot of athletes, a lot of rappers. They like to laugh. Look, I work with them on Mad. Mm -hmm. Good guys. Mm -hmm. Good heart. Good guys. Give you the shirt off their back. Is it, is it ironic? Is it, is it a coincidence that they both, most of their friends are white and got white wives? They like white women? I, I mean, then they develop envy because they go home. They get out the car with, they, with, with, with their friend, with their other partner, and he listening to your music. They walk in the house, they girl listening to your music. They go downstairs, the kids doing a dance to your music. Now they are hypnotized with hatred. 